See the SpaceX logo? Tropical IPA yeast from Omega. Test number four. This one is 100% out of style and it's next. All right, 100% out of style. It is the number four test of the Tropical IP test and the last test of this yeast in this mini series. And I don't have, oh, I have my binder, but I don't have the page open because it's actually over there where I'm brewing. I took it out and put it over there. So it doesn't matter. It's a smash ale. It is two row and cascade. This one is all about the yeast. I wanna see what this brings to the party. I know what a smash ale of two row and cascade tastes like. I wanna see what the difference is with this yeast as opposed to kind of some nondescript yeast like uh, I wanna say USO4 and uh, some like American ale yeast that are pretty, they're, they're, they're used in order for the hops and the malts to shine. So I wanna see what this does. So let's go get on that right now. So I guess technically this is my, I had a bad freaking day at work and I need to brew something to feel better because really nothing makes me feel better than a nice therapeutic brew. So I'm getting started. It's at night. I'm going to brew inside. I usually don't do this. So got the water going. I, I didn't, for this, it's a smash ale. It's, it's a base beer I've made. I don't know how many times to try things out. So I know the water is a little more than two and a half gallons. So I just put it in. I'm going to get up to about 163 degrees. I'm going to get the grains and hops together now while that's happening. That, those measurements I'll give out, but I didn't methodically measure this water. It's about, we'll say 2.6 gallons. And I'll see if I remember to put liters on the screen. So that's what we're starting with. And if I hadn't said it in the introduction, which I'm sure I have, this is the beer to test out the tropical IPA yeast. So we're just going to do a simple smash. And let's get into what that involves grist and boil wise right now. All right, super, super simple grain bill here. This is all two row. And all I need is two pounds, 12 ounces. And I have two bags because I know with this one bag, what's in it, I cannot possibly be lucky enough that this is two pounds, 12 ounces. Let's find out. Nope, it is one pound. 12.8 ounces so we're almost uh, almost an exact pound short which would be nice because i gotta go get one of my one pound leftover bags and dump it in but nope that's not gonna happen so let's get this to two 12 well roughly thereabouts if it's a little over i'm not gonna worry about it tonight let's see two i don't know if the numbers are coming up on screen 210 there's 211, oh, so close, 211.9, 211.12, 12. all right, hey, something more, this, that's a good omen. I'm taking that as a good sign. So I'm gonna grind those up twice, do a double grind, double mill, put them in the brew bag, and get to uh, mashing. All right, grains are milled. There you go, I'm trying to get a good look at them without getting in the Shadow water is up to, it wasn't quite ready. It probably still isn't. Let's find out. Uh, 151, maybe 152, 153 at best. So another 10 degrees, not quite there. Oops, <laughs> I just shook the camera. I meant to shake the thermometer. Sorry about that. So as soon as that gets up and I clean up that water, uh, should be into mashing. Now for my hops, they're somewhere in one of these bags. Let's see. Looking for Cascade, nope, nope. And by the way, it took me embarrassingly long to figure out to put these labels inside the bags and there's Cascade. So there's my hop freezer right next to the Otter Pops. They've been next to them for years. Let's see if I can focus, just years. I can't imagine what they taste like. I might try one on a video of the future. All right, Cascade hops, freshly opened. In fact, this is a Half ounce bag, right? I just saw that somewhere. Yeah, half ounce. I'm not sure why I have such a little bag, but I'm glad because I don't need many of this. In fact, I might. In fact, what does that come out to? That comes out to 0.45. Yes, thank you. Cat helping me with math. 0.45 of an ounce. So I'm just going to, what I need is 0.45. So this is a half ounce. I'm going to use the whole thing. I'm going to adjust the recipe a little bit. So first one will still stick at 0.15 ounce. So let's see. Let me tear. I just changed the mode. Darn it. There we go, there's a mode, tear's done, so let's get 0.15. Eh, 0.16, good enough 
for this. And this is going to be 60 minutes. I can't find my blue Sharpie. So I'm going to try this orange one. Hopefully it shows up okay. So, sort of. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. You barely see that? A 60 on there? There it is. Hopefully being inside will be okay. I'm going to put it in the order as well. So, all right, I'm going to do point one five again. Oh, that's point one eight. That's a little worn out. I don't mind being a little over, but point one four. There we go. Evens out that uh, heavy pour over there. This is going to be 30 minutes. Yeah, you can see that one a little better. And the last one is supposed to be point one five at 15 minutes, but I'm going to put the rest in. Should be point two or somewhere others around there. Wow, it's point three. It's a lot. This was an over. Oh, there's more in there. So point, what do we got? Point three two. I don't really want to save point one five hops, I guess. All right, well, what the heck? Let's uh we're gonna distribute a little bit. So this will actually be we'll call it point two. Let's see if we can get them the let the first two point two instead of point one five. So that's point two. That's point two. Is that the six? I guess it doesn't matter. The best point two. And what's that come out to? Point two one. So I actually got point uh, point eleven extra hops. So we'll put them in this. Like I said, this is mostly for the yeast. So to see what the yeast brings to the party. So that's it. Uh, just waiting for the mash to finish at this point. I drew a little sample here to do an iodine test. I did about a 42, 43 minute mesh. Didn't even have a timer set. It's not a real complex grist. You saw it's two row. It should be converted by now. So I'm going to check and see. And <laughs> okay, this is childproof. I need to use two hands. Okay, I just got the incredibly complicated iodine bottle open. Let's get a little in there. Okay, come on. A little more than that, just to be sure. There we go. Let's mix it up a little bit. Yep, that is... If I get my thumb out of the way, that's definitely converted. Not, did not change color at all. So, I'm going to boil off a little bit, get into the boil kettle, and get going. The sweet wort is transferred, and it is on the stove. I got it on high. On high, this volume, it'll get to a boil in about... 20 minutes or so, very little less actually. This is about the, this is not about, this is the biggest volume I do on the stove. I do one gallon batches. This is two gallons and two cups, exactly. It's exactly what's in there. Any more, I'd be waiting too long or might even be a little too heavy for the stove. This is the perfect amount to do inside. In fact, uh, it took me, I don't know, maybe two, three minutes to kind of set things aside and Get the camera ready and make sure the mic was on. You can see how much it's already steaming off the surface. So this should be to a rolling boil pretty quick. I didn't time it. I should have. I think I will. But uh, I don't do inside brewing often. My wife can't stand the smell basically is what it comes down to. But it's raining off and on. It's just a, It just feels crappy outside. So I was like, I'm doing it inside. My wife's not home for five hours. I can air the place out by then. All right. I'd say we have a rolling boil. I was going to kind of wait out for that hot break to fall back in but I don't really want to do this all night so I think that's close enough so I'm going to go ahead and start the timer let's see right there and put in that first top edition right in All right, we're down the last 15 minutes, which I almost missed chatting back and forth with a friend of mine about tap handles, actually, so it was important. There was another bing if you heard that. Anyway, here's the last 15 minutes with the Warflock. That's going in, and once that's done, we'll chill it and get it in the fermenter. All right, everything's in the fermenter. It's kind of hard to see. Got the blow-off tube, which I think way longer than it needs to be, but it reaches and it closes fine, so I'm not going to mess with it. Just going to let it go. This is the uh, Tropical IPA number three. If you're watching these videos in order, you just saw this, and now you've gone back in time and saw it before it's even bottled. So here we go, fourth in this yeast uh, experiment, and uh, still have to wait for it to finish fermenting, bottle and taste it, though, so that'll be coming up. How you How you how you go? 100% out of style. OOS. Tasting day. 
Here we go. Let's listen for the hiss. We got a hiss. That's good. We got carbonation. Hmm. Smells good. I don't know if it's a tropical IPA. Well, let's get a better smell. Let's get a look at it too. Now this is the smash. Of course you all, you know this. You all just saw the video. For me, it's been a few weeks. So smash ale. There we go. Got a nice gold color. It's a little hazy. This is just 10 days bottle conditioning and it's only been in the fridge for two. So I think if the other ones stay in the fridge for a while, if I like it, if I hold on to them, I think this is, most of this haze is gonna drop right out. So that's not too unexpected. Let's see what we got for aroma. Getting a little fruity, fruity smell off of it. Aroma, that's a better way to say that. Kind of getting that tart fruit. Maybe that's where the pineapple comes from. Maybe it's strictly from the yeast. And a little bit of hop aroma as well. And by hop, I mean that, that general underlying hop that all the hop aromas start with and then you add some more characteristics. I don't think that's unexpected either. Yeah, if there's one fruit I pick, it's pineapple, which makes a lot of sense why pineapple showed up in the other beers so prevalently. So I'm going to go right for the taste now. There is, there is pineapple on the finish, absolutely on the finish. As I swallow, I can taste that pineapple. That's, that's really, uh, um, now it makes sense. I think that's where the yeast really brings in a lot of tropical fruit flavors is, is a underlying pineapple flavor. Let's see if there's any more complexity to it other than that. There's not a whole lot to it. Of course it is a, this is a smash ale, which I've said once again, so it's not going to be super complex. But the only thing I do pull out of it is a fruitiness to it. There's kind of that fruity ester flavor, just a touch of tart, which I think is uh, coming again from the yeast. It's certainly not coming from the hops or from the grain bill. I'm going to take just one more test and see if there's anything more to that than just those few things. That's about all I'm getting out of it are those, those fruit flavors I described. And with this grain bill, with this mashed ale, that's specifically what I wanted to happen. I wanted to taste what the yeast had brought to this. I know what this beer tastes like with kind of an American ale yeast that doesn't add a whole lot of specific flavor. So I, I know what hops and I know what grains are already tasting in this beer. There is more to it than that. So this yeast is absolutely doing something. And I think the biggest contribution is that tropical fruit in the form of a pineapple flavor. I think with the accompanying hops, the right amounts, which I think we've already discovered in the first episode, there needed to be more than what I put in, and they should be put in later, in my opinion. I think with the right hops at the right time, it will add a lot more flavor to it as well. So I get an idea, a better idea of what this does, this yeast does. It's had some great fermentations and some great results. I just need to alter how I use hops. I think I know what hops to use. I've learned that in this series as well. I just need to alter when to use them in what amounts. So I'm definitely going to revisit this. I have a couple vials of the yeast. I actually already made a slant for my yeast bank. So I'll be able to try this again with this yeast sometime soon, but there's a lot of other beers I got to get to. In fact, there's an even bigger project with more beers and a number of beer styles that I'm about to start up next. So we're going to get right into that in this series. So that does it for this episode. And that does it for this run of the Omega Yeast Tropical IPA test. I know I had fun putting this together and I actually liked all the, I, I enjoyed all the beers that I liked. None of them were just exactly what I wanted, but it's better to walk away with beers that you like than beers that you hate. So this whole project has been a win for me. So that does it for this episode. If you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell. I don't know what I'm actually pointing at. I don't know if the bell is here or here, or maybe it's here or there. I don't know where that bell is, but wherever it is, go ahead and hit that. That way you'll be notified when the next video comes out. And like I said, we got a long series of different styles, a lot of different styles coming up in the next round of videos. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next episode.